All right. I am going to uh, introduce um, a theorem. It's called the uh, separating hyperplane theorem. And this is sort of like the um, basis of talking about any classification problem. All right, so I'm showing you a few pictures here, three pictures. Uh, some problems are hard, some problems are easy. And you can see that in these three uh, examples, problem like this is clearly easy uh, for us to uh, create a decision boundary and separate the two classes. These two are hard for the following reasons. In this example, it is very hard to find a decision boundary because the set is non-convex. Okay? Because it's non-convex, and so how can you find a good decision boundary? You need to find a curve that will go along this curvature so that you can cut it out. Okay, so that is one difficulty. The difficulty of this problem is what? Is that they, they, they intrinsically they're overlapping. When they're intrinsically overlapping, that means no matter how you do, there will be error, and there's no way that you can do better than just cutting it here. Okay, so there will be some intrinsic limit of this problem. For this, if you find a good decision boundary, you can still separate them. It's just that you need to find, you need to find a more complicated decision boundary. For this problem, no matter what decision boundary you find, it's not going to be separable. Right? Okay. So now how can I generalize this problem? Now you may probably see problems like this. Uh, I have circles here. Okay. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then I have, um, and then I have like a Swiss uh, row, uh, type of thing. Okay. So this is, this is what? This could be, uh, this is, could be, uh, linearly not separable, um, but then, uh, it's just because of the non-convexity, right? So it's not about the overlapping issue. Uh, okay. So what we want to do is to introduce notion of linearly separable. So you can see that linearly separable requires some conditions to make sure that it works. Okay. So what are the conditions? The conditions is the following. It's called the separating hyperplane theorem. Is that, uh, so the question is, can we always find a separating hyperplane? The answer is no, unless the classes are linear separable. Uh, if it is convex and not overlapping, then yes. Okay, so the theorem says the following. If you have two classes, okay, C1 and C2, they are closed convex set. Okay, so these are the two classes. They are co closed convex sets, okay, uh, such that they don't overlap. This condition says that they don't overlap. Uh, then you can always find a linear function. By linear function, I mean that you have this gx equals to w, uh, x and w, uh, w transpose x and w0, uh, such that uh, when you put a point uh, x, that's the point is coming from c1, you put it in, it will be positive. You have another point x that comes from c2, you put it in, it will be negative. Okay, so that is called the separating hyperplane theorem. It says that under this condition, then you can find a plane that really separates the them into two classes. One on the positive side, one on the negative side. Question. Okay, so the question is how do we know in high dimensional spaces that C1 and C2, they are not overlapping, right? Uh, that's, that is a computational problem, okay? So now what, what I'm describing is, a, is a, like a theoretical property. So I'm giving you a property that may or may not be easily verifiable. So you need to decouple the question, right? So one is what would be the fundamental requirement to make it work? So we're addressing that issue. What you, what we would tend to think about is the computational issue. Now I have a data set. How do I know whether it is linearly separable or not? That is a lot harder to verify. Okay. So typically what we do in, 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 in theoretical study is the following. We look at a problem and then we have an algorithm in hand. We want to analyze the performance of this algorithm. Then we want to see, okay, under the simplest possible situation, how well it can perform. And so we create a toy problem, 
And then the, in that type problem, you will assume that there are two classes of data points that are linearly separable, so, so you can, they're not overlapping. So you assume that, and then you check whether your algorithm will still converge, will still have the, the generalization capability that you want. So that's on the theoretical study. On the practical side, which everyone c cares about, uh, then you, you lose all these uh, um, properties. What you need to do is to, to have a data, to, to look at the data set that you're working on, test on the performance, report the validation score, report the testing scores. That's the best that you can do. Okay? So I want to, uh, if, if this is your first time working on machine learning problems, try to decouple what is the fundamental limit of that method versus what computationally what you can do with that method. These are two different, different problems. Okay? All right, so separated hyperplane is addressing the first problem. Fundamentally, what is the limit of my data set? Fundamentally, what's the, the, the limit of my distribution that gives me the data set? And we need to address that problem first because we need to set up the context of the problem. Um, so, uh, separating, separating hyperplane theorem provides an answer and it says that as long as they're convex, uh, they are not overlapping, you will be able to find a plane. Okay, and, and by finding a plane, I mean that, uh, if you do have this situation, you will be able to find a perfect, uh, decision boundary that has zero error. Okay? Now, of course you will say, well, okay, wait a minute, because you're touching on just the, the, the training data sets. How about the generalization? We'll come to that point later. Okay? Alright, so now first of all, let's, um, Okay, before, before I talk about the, the, the pictorial proof, let me also make a comment here. The theorem here provides you a sufficiency and not a necessity requirement. What, what does it mean? It means that if I am convex and not overlapping, I'm guaranteed to find that plane. However, to get to that plane, I do not need to be a, a, a convex and not overlapping. How? Well, the, one of the kind of example is this. Uh, all right, so you have two sets. They're really, really, really far apart. They are, they are non-convex, but since they're far apart, you can still cut them off. <laughs> okay? So, having convex and non-overlapping it is sufficient to, re to make it happen. However, to make it happen, it's not required to have uh, both um, convexity and non-overlapping. No uh, now, what is the proof? Well, the proof is the following. Uh, I'm not going to give you the full proof. The proof is in the appendix. So the pictorial proof is this. You draw two circles here, and then you, you can measure uh, the distance between these two sets. And that you can do because uh, in a 2D plane, you can always find X star and Y star such that the distance is, is minimized. And then from there, you draw a line. Once you draw that dotted line, you draw a perpendicular line. That perpendicular line will become your separating hyperplane. So draw that line, and then you can also define that normal direction of that plane, which essentially just x star minus a minus y star. So draw that line, and then how can you use this convexity? Well, you can use the convexity in the following way. You pick a point in the set, and then measure the angle with respect to your normal direction. Because it is convex, that angle has to be less than 90 degree. Okay, so that, that is the proof of the separate and hyper plane. How can you show that the existence of this plane? As long as two, two common sets, this angle is always less than 90 degree. And then with a few other arguments, you can prove the result. Okay, uh, so I will encourage you to take a look at the proof. The proof is not required for this course, um, but it will be uh, very interesting to look at how people use this convexity and also this angle argument to show that the existence of hyper plane. Now, what is more important, of course, is about this generalization uh, issue, okay? So, uh, I have a data set that contains uh, points x1 through xn. They are closed, they are convex, they are overlapping, then I, I, somehow I can show that um, um, uh, the, the separating hyperplane theorem, I can, I, okay, I know that the closed convex and no, no overlapping, okay, then I can uh, show that it is, uh, this existence of separating hyperplane. And then I, that means I can find a line. Uh, am I done? Not yet, okay. That, that, that is the issue about generalization and training. So imagine that I have these two groups of data points. They're the training data points. You have 
um, 1,000 orange, you have 1,000 apples here. Okay, so they're the images. And then you can also visualize them by looking at the principal components. You can, you can just visualize them. And you see that, ah, oh, okay, they're not overlapping in, in one or two of the, uh, 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 major axes. Okay. So that is the visualization of the plum. Uh, and then you say that, okay, am I done? Uh, not yet because, because you have only shown the performance on your training data set. Okay. So, on the training data set, uh, it is linear separable, but who knows that how does this, uh, the, the actual data set looks like? So it could be this. All right. So, uh, the first set is like this. And then the second set is like that. All right. Because the, the, you, we, and then another lesson that we need to understand, if this is the first time you think about machine learning, there is a strict separation between training and testing. For testing, you need to test all the samples that comes from the entire set. Of course, in, in, in actual testing, you only test a subset, a subset of samples, okay? But what you really care is the performance over the entire set. When you do training, you're only training using a few data points. That's, that's called the training samples. Okay, having linearly separable on the training set does not imply that you have linearly separability uh, on the general set, which includes the testing data points. So uh, what can we do? Well, then you need to study a lot of things. One is called, uh, when you have a, uh, when it's called a generalization bound, Okay, when you have a uh, separating hyperplane, how well that I can generalize beyond my training samples? That would be that would be some discussion towards the end of this course, part four of the course. We spend a few lectures on that. Uh, uh, the, the hope is that when I have um, uh, uh, when I have a, a random a sample, um, when I have a set of random samples that draw from this uh, training set. Um, then hopefully when I have enough of these training samples, it will cover enough of my original distribution. Then I can say something about my generalization bound. Uh, another thing that we will talk about is how well can you do with this uh, linear separating hyperplane? Uh, it will be uh, the bias variance trade-off. Okay. Maybe you will have more bias, but you have less uh, variance. So perhaps the overall performance will be minimized. So there will be a lot of discussions about that later. Um, but f uh, I want to mention uh, a couple points here, uh, which we have already discussed. Um, finding separating hyperplane for training set does not imply that it will work for testing set. Uh, and a separating hyperplane theorem is more often used in theoretical analysis uh, by assuming properties of the testing set. If a data set is linear separable, then you're guaranteed to find a perfect classifier. Okay, so that means your testing set is linearly separable, then you can guarantee to find that plane. Uh, then you can show how good your, your trained classifier, which, which means that when you have a classifier that's trained based on a finite set of training samples, how will that will perform compared to the ideal, the perfect one? Okay, uh, so um, if you go back to here, if you have two sets, these are your uh, testing sets, you know the existence of a perfect classifier, and now you only have uh, a finite set of samples, you train another classifier, then you can, can compare your classifier with the perfect classifier, then you can measure the performance gap. Now, linear classifiers have uh, limitations. Here are two cases where you have limitations. One is that uh, this set is intrinsically doesn't allow you to have linearly separability. Uh, like what? You have a circle inside, you have dots outside. Uh, another case is the following. Uh, you have class C1 that occupies the two sides of, of, the, of the space, and then C2 that lives in the middle. That also doesn't allow you to find one plane that can separate the two together. Uh, so what you can do is um, uh, uh, the following. There are three solutions. One is that you need to use a nonlinear classifier. For example, instead of using a W transpose X plus W zero, you get, you can also include a second order term here. So that's the nonlinear classifier. Uh, the approach two is the kernel method that we have already visited. Uh, that is using the radial basis function by, by, by using the local, 
uh, features, okay, to do the classification. The third approach is to extract features that we are going to spend two lectures on that. Um, perhaps uh, you don't want to look at it in the pixel domain. You want to uh, you want to look at things in some other domains. Perhaps that would be the uh, um, and the, the the gradient domain. Okay, I'm just making things up, right? Uh, so you want to transform to another domain so that you can pull the features there, and then in that new space, you may be able to get uh, linear separability. Okay. Now, uh, I also want to give a final remark that there are two issues we want to decouple them. One is the intrinsic geometry of the problem, which comes from these two examples. The problem itself doesn't allow you to do anything. The other issue is the lack of training samples. Okay, so the lack of training samples will give you a, a, a worse uh, classifier, but that doesn't solve um, the first problem, even if you have infinitely many training samples. Okay, so these are two different levels of problems when you encounter uh, a, cl a classification problem. Okay, so here is a list of uh, reading materials. I will encourage you to take a look. Uh, that involves um, two sections of this book, and then there are a few uh, online materials you can find. Okay, so now uh, when we come back next lecture, we will talk about uh, um, principal component analysis, and then we will also talk about um, uh, handcrafted features and deep features.